Join us for this week's On the Conservation Front as we dive deeper into critical water issues facing the state. Florida Sportsman has been leading the fight on the conservation front lines for over 50 years. Florida's red tide continues to kill marine life, leaving many residents to clean up the mess. The toxic algae bloom has prompted a state of emergency in Florida, and no one knows just how long it's going to last. Toxic algae that's harmful to humans is spreading from Florida's Gulf Coast to Atlantic beaches for the first time in more than a decade. The phenomenon known as red tide can kill fish and cause respiratory issues in people. The tide continues to make its move up the Gulf Coast. Good evening, everyone. I'm James Newman. And I'm Wendy Ryan. Thanks for joining us. Within the last two hours, FWC releasing this updated tracking map right here. It shows the bloom reaching the north end of Anna Maria Island. The red tide is naturally occurring in the Gulf of Mexico. The latest science indicates that Lake Okeechobee's toxic discharges can increase both the severity and the duration of red tide blooms. We've seen, you know, endangered turtles, we've seen dolphin, we've seen, you know, countless manatees, as well as uh, these valuable game fish. So who has among us here uh, any idea of the scope of the mortality of what we've gone through here in the last year and also has any sense of the possibilities for recovery? I mean, there's pompano, there's snook, redfish, there's eels, you know, by the hundreds just on a short stretch of beach. So what's going on with our, our stocks and what's the real picture, what's the real story of the, of the mortality of this red tide for wildlife? Even though red tide in the Gulf of Mexico is natural, I think it's, uh, it's absurd to assume that that organism is not affected the same way other harmful algal blooms are affected worldwide by nutrient inputs. In fact, Karenia brevis, which uh, uh, causes red tide also occurs in the northern Gulf of Mexico and studies have directly shown that that those blooms are, are impacted by human nutrients coming uh, into coastal waters. Uh, for BTT we see the uh, underlying cause of red tide, blue-green algae, brown tide to be water mismanagement at the state level. It's a policy issue. Um, more science is needed to better understand it uh, but this isn't uh, unique. It's happened elsewhere. Um, studies that have looked globally at harmful algal blooms have shown that places where humans put nutrients into coastal systems are the hotbeds for harmful algal bloom. So even though the red tide is naturally occurring in the Gulf of Mexico, it starts offshore. Um, some uh, evaluative research has shown that the concentration of red tide in coastal waters in southwest Florida is 20 times higher than it is offshore where the red tide starts. And that's where that red tide meets the nutrients. The money needs to be put in upstream solutions, and upstream solutions are all about stopping the nutrients at their source. And so, you know, that's coming from agriculture, but it's also coming from human waste. We're spreading biosolids from human waste on our agricultural land. It's coming from cattle land. And getting this stopped is going to require a comprehensive look at how we can best attack the problem. Yes, red tide is naturally occurring, but the location, the intensity, the duration, the extent of this, of this event strongly suggests that this bloom is being fed by the nutrients coming from man-made sources. Lake Okeechobee is one of them. Coastal septic, sewer and urban runoff is, is a major problem. Agricultural runoff, ineffective municipal water treatment, um, fertilizer from private homes and commercial operations, including agriculture and sugar, citrus, horse farms and sod farms. These are, these are all problems. It's not just nitrogen, it's phosphorus. And in, in, in the west coast of Florida, off of Tampa Bay, not only do we have the Indian nitrogen coming from lawn fertilizer and the phosphorus, we have the phosphate industry. Um, a lot of people don't realize that even if you don't fish, you should be concerned uh, about declines in fish populations because they really are telling us that the system is broken. They should also be concerned about the economy. Uh, the saltwater recreational fishery in Florida has an annual economic impact of about seven and a half billion dollars. If you compare that to other portions of the state, the economy like agriculture, et cetera, it's very large. And unfortunately, it's not getting a fair shake as far as management goes. The Florida tourism industry, the marine trades industry, the CCA, all of these major statewide organizations are feeling the pain. So Florida's got 
the health of the health of the estuaries. They've got the health of, of our population now because of the consequences of these toxic exposures. And now, what's really probably going to move the needle for us and maybe save the day is Florida's economy is threatened. I see that as the good news because I think that's what it's going to take to convince leadership, whomever they are, to start moving the needle to do constructive things. So we know that healthy fish systems can recover, right? Tampa Bay was devoid of seagrass and everything else and they're because of sewage out, outfall issues. And so they created what now is in Florida some of the best uh, coastal um, nutrient management around and the grass came back, the fishery's fantastic. Um, so you, if you fix a system, it will recover. The challenge now is one of policy change. That means that those who are making the policy have to use the information that we and others have provided to create a long-term change in how Florida is managed. And I don't think it's an overstatement um, to say that as goes the fisheries in, in Florida, so will go the rest of the economy. And if we continue to lose the habitats and water quality um, that are negatively impacting our fisheries, uh, the rest of Florida's economy is gonna, gonna follow. And it's going, going to become things like human health, not enough fresh water, potable fresh water for people to drink, uh, and on and on. So I think if we, if we look at this as a long-term issue, it ha didn't happen overnight. It's gotten considerably worse uh, in recent years because the management has declined. But it's been a long-term problem in Florida, um, lack of perspective on the future. But if you consider, again, that the state's saltwater recreational fishery is worth $7 billion a year, and you will get that money in perpetuity as long as the systems are healthy, then investing billions now to ensure that you get billions and trillions later is a pretty good investment.